so i'm sivakumar uh, this is my twitter handle uh, i don't tweet much just started off uh, to tweet a lot recently uh, some of it might sound too geeky if you follow me but uh, that's something you can decide on this uh, so uh, this uh, you would have probably seen a new trend in all these uh, front end conferences where uh, people keep using all these troll pictures that you keep seeing on your facebook page right so i did have one such picture and i thought uh, it was bad on my part to use it this is ember's official logo i, I mean this is the mascot of ember uh, and i think it's the only framework out there which has a mascot of sorts uh i don't want i i am not going to track uh, talk trash about any other frameworks today uh but uh, since i am an ember guy i'm supposed to do this if you go to angular site there is like an a and there is a circle over it yeah something of that sort when i saw that i thought okay my superhero framework and it's going to save me a lot of time but i uh, actually lost all my patience over 4 months time and then i switched over to ember and uh, for 8 months now i've been developing a product on ember and uh, it's not a small product uh, if uh, i have to give you a stat on it even with ember uh, it's about 8000 lines of code so far 8000 to 9000 lines of code without all the external plugins involved uh, so it's a pretty huge project and uh, ember does work really well over it uh, and the reason why i moved over from angular was because uh, how many of you have seen angular docs before okay uh, if you are not aware of angular uh, it's a project backed by google it's a client side uh, single page application mvc framework uh, which is a fancy way of saying all your uh, javascript html whatever you need to show anything inside your app will be loaded first and the subsequent request you make to your server will be just for the data that's what single page applications are uh, quite okay if his talk is about that i don't want to take more time on it you could go to his talk and find out more uh, and your name is dan dan okay so Uh, you want to be at dynans uh, session if you want to know more about single page apps uh, so i will leave it to you uh, to take care of that uh, so uh, what happened with angular for me was that uh, i hated all these technical terms in college uh, where they told me that this is uh, some xyz and by the end of it they would have just told you that you switch on the button and the light comes through but they would have written a whole chapter over it so i hated uh, reading through technical topics like that it's good if you want to just learn about it but when it comes to actually implementing stuff you need something which is more robust and uh, to jump back uh, to my intro i am a r&d guy i used to be with mindre r&d uh, with their storage and net network infrastructure services uh, and it had nothing to do with all these i wrote command line apps for a living uh, the best i could get to a ui was writing a gui app on windows desktop which worked on only windows server 2008 which like 40 people in the whole world use so that was the closest i got to any ui and that's kind of why i moved away from it and i became a full stack web developer now i work at a company called uh, fiberlink we are a mobile device management company here in bangalore and we just got acquired by ibm so coming back uh, the reason why i liked ember was they made things very easy for me to start off with and till day uh, whatever basic stuff are available in their guides that's all i needed to go back to whenever i'm stuck with something and it usually doesn't end up being the case i always know where to go and look for something so Ember is kind of like the tool you want to go to uh, if you want to focus on your product more. If you want to learn Angular or Backbone or uh, Knockout or X Y Z apps, uh, J, like frameworks or utilities out there, uh, it's good. But 
when you are setting out to build a very complex app, uh, there are multiple things uh, you need to decide on before moving further. And Ember did uh, get full marks on all my uh, checklists there. So uh, you are here, so I need to keep you here. So this is kind of like a cheating thing that I did. This guy is one of the core uh, team members from Ember. And uh, this is so true. Uh, I'm not trying to pitch Ember here, but uh, if you are new to JavaScript world, or you are used to just writing small things in jQuery, jQuery UI, or uh, pro possibly the worst thing you could have done is you would have downloaded like 10, 30 plugins. So you would search for best photo swipe uh, uh, jQuery plugin. You get one, you put it in. And uh, immediately next day, LinkedIn, you see a new skill called jQuery there. So if you come from such a world, then this is going to be a total uh, paradigm shift for you because you are not going to touch the DOM ever again in your life. DOM. Uh, so the DOM is nothing but uh, in your browser, uh, whatever features are available in the browser, the CSS part of it, whatever is available in your page, uh, it's controlled through this uh, data structure called the DOM. It's called the document object model. So in jQuery, you will say that, OK, uh, if let's say that Eric Brin, right? If that had an ID called uh, Twitter name, you would have to say hash Twitter name dot do something. Uh, once you start using Ember, you will never ever care about a selector unless you're styling it. That's the whole point of it. So I do hope uh, you will feel this way at the end of this talk. So uh, Ember uh, wants to be more productive out of the box, uh, meaning if when you start off, a lot of projects seem nice. Uh, there are a lot of to-do apps, a uh, lot of small apps where they show you, OK, this is how you put this particular feature in, and this is how you plug things together, and things will just automatically work for you. But uh, once you start down to implement something of your own, uh, you will feel that it's bit difficult because of lack of a lot of things. And those are a few things Ember wants to address as a community. And uh, I don't want to get too much into details. Uh, the whole point of Ember is uh, not everybody needs to uh, solve problems with a browser. That in every other language, they'll tell you that, OK, if you're using jQuery and you're using IE8, Make sure you add this polyfill so that you get access to these features. And then use jQuery on top of it. Or there is this famous library called HTML, HTML uh, shiv uh, or shim, which you add to make certain things work on your app for older browsers. And uh, these are the, not the problems you want to be working on. Unless you are either from Google or Mozilla and you're working on browsers, these are not problems that you should be dealing with. The problems that you should be dealing with is your own product. How do I get this particular feature in? How do I structure it? How do I ship it out? Are the questions which are more important to you and everybody in your organization. So with that, Ember tries to uh, encapsulate a lot of stuff for you and make it look very simple for you so that you don't have to uh, get into the gory details. Uh, and if you want to just get your app done, but at the same time, if you want to get in and get your hands dirty and uh, probably replace whatever they say is our default convention, you can do that. They have a lot of rules set, but you ca they actually tell you that you can break all those rules if you're sure about it. Uh, so it does, there are a lot of tools around Ember. Uh, it's not just that you download the JS and that's it. There are extensions, there are command line utilities, and there are much more which helps you be productive out of the box. And when I move on to the coding part, you'll understand more on that. Uh, so this is uh, a standard line I use to describe Ember to my friends at Office, that it's a framework for building ambitious web apps. Uh, but uh, what I tell my friends is this, which uh, I would like you guys to take away today that 
if you learn ember you will become a badass web developer and it's not a marketing stunt it is true i am not getting anything from ember for this so uh, that's true uh, so aim of the talk is to spread the ember love uh, you will know about this if you go online to any ember js forum uh, to get you curious about it that uh, after this talk you do try out something of your own and this is something i'm very concerned about today that i want to make you understand that jquery is the equivalent of c++ and you shouldn't be using jquery anymore you should be using high level languages similar to how many of you guys here use c++ on a day to day basis you're lucky and you too and you as well and uh, given a chance if you have to develop uh, i guess you guys are into core uh, systems development application development desktop applications and you yeah. more or less so uh, there i don't i don't think you have a choice uh, you're kind of stuck with c++ i guess because i did develop for a while and the best you can get is c sharp uh, which is a joke so uh, uh, c sharp uh, it's another language from microsoft uh, it, it was a bad joke uh so if you if you had a choice and if you had to move away from c++ i i'm sure you guys might be interested in learning stuff like ruby or python or all the crazy fanatic buzzwords out there today so please when you are coming from college or you are new to javascript don't think that jquery is javascript jquery took javascript to an entirely different level but uh, it's like the 80s and uh, you just have to move on accept it and move on i know you are emotionally attached to it that uh, your manager feels that your app is going to break when you remove jquery from your app but please uh, try to get there soon and uh, please stop jquery is still not you know i think you say you have to dump it out because dom is very very important still yes i mean uh, so it totally depends if you are just writing one uh, small uh, pop up or form and that has one input box and one submit button and if you have to just submit that email id to your server i don't recommend using any framework at all you don't even need to use yeah so you don't even need to use jquery there so it's all about the context on where you want to use stuff and like i said before uh, ember is for building ambitious web apps meaning you have a big web app you want to build uh, ember js is where you want to go to so how do you define uh, ambitious web uh i'll show you some uh so i told you this before uh it makes you productive i'll you'll know when i get into the code and uh, if you uh, haven't heard about this already yahoo almost uh, made it a rule in their us uh, department that all new apps will be built on ember there and uh, few of these you might know this is wine twitter's wine uh, zendesk you might have heard of groupon bangalore groupon same guys but the bangalore groupon site is not ember it's the us site and uh, this is a payment gateway and square uh, is the from the guys who made twitter so it's pretty popular right now so let's get to some code Uh, so I set up this small. Uh, I mean, you would have okay. You can read it. Right? I mean, it's a black background, so don't think it's switched off. It's right there on the top. Uh, so uh, there is this small uh, starter kit that Ember provides on their site. If you download that, uh, you just uh, get. Let me just download it and show you. Okay. I think Wi-Fi is still not working. Let's just try. Okay, let that download. And uh, okay, uh, probably I, yeah, we got that. So uh, this is the starter kit. when you download it you get one html page with some little markup a test folder which i'm not going to get into right now 
so right now, uh, unfortunately, we do have a dependency on jQuery, but that is going to go away sometime next month. Uh, so you could be sure that it's not going to come in the starter app anymore. And handlebars is a library uh, which is used for templating. Uh, if you are from a Java world, uh, you know all those expressions we put in JSP tags. Uh, same thing for the client. Uh, that's handlebars, and that's going to go away as well. Uh, and it's just going to be Ember JS there, nothing else. Uh, there is something called uh, HTML bars that they're working on, which is going to replace all of that. And uh, one of the best uh, things about Ember JS is that uh, when you look at some of these frameworks or tool sets out there, you think that I like this particular feature that this framework offers, and I'd like to take that part out. And probably I don't want to delete my jQuery, but just bring out that particular feature out of that uh, framework and use it in my app. And uh, that's how they architected Ember from the beginning. That Angular team is actually thinking of taking portions of Ember and including it in their own apps. And uh, Ember team does actively work with others to make sure that whatever they're developing right now becomes the gold standard for that particular piece. So HTML bars uh, is like a similar templating thing, but uh, it has little more advanced features and it's more uh, performance intense. I mean, it's good when it comes to performance. Uh, so uh, I'll talk a little bit about it when I get into the code. And uh, the, the other parts are, uh, there is something called promises. Uh, so in jQuery, today what you'll do is, you'll say jQuery, uh, my API, sorry, uh, dot uh, get my API and uh, run this function, right? Uh, it's been too long since I used jQuery, so something song, please don't mind. Uh, so this is more like your success function, right? So whatever you enter here, you're waiting for the server to respond. And after it does, you uh, do something inside here. And uh, obviously, you guys would know about asynchronous request versus asynchronous request through jQuery, meaning do you want that request to go asynchronously, or do you want it to wait right there till it gets over? But there is a difference even when you use async, that even though you're doing async, uh, what you're trying to do there is you are still waiting for that particular piece of code to execute. Instead, with promises, this is already available in jQuery if you are not aware of it. Uh, there is something called then. So it's like let this come back whenever it does, and after it comes back, it will execute that function. And let's say this function returns something else, then you can keep chaining together some more stuff and uh, get all those done whenever it gets done. So that's the concept of promises. So J Ember is developing something on that as well. So let me not bore you with that. Uh, I'll just just jump right into the app. Uh, that's ES6. It's coming soon. ES6 will take a very long time to, yeah, yeah. And if your boss is still adamant about IE8 and be sure you're not going to get promises. Yeah. Chrome's like the superhero, supports everything. Uh, so uh, since uh, I didn't want to take that much time by typing every single line and make you guys fall asleep through it, I did this small uh, repository uh, in GitHub. I have the link to it at the end. So what I've done there is, Okay, I remembered. So I just tagged it to four levels. Uh, so I wrote code till certain level and I just tagged it. So I'm just going to check out each tag and just going to show you what's what and uh, have the live coding go through that way. So just check out step one. Okay. Uh, just sublime text. This is a code editor like your notepad. 
so this is the same as the starter kit. Uh, the only thing I have done here is I removed everything from the JS uh, file which initially comes with some code. Uh, and this is the index page and I removed all the uh, built-in uh, or default uh, spaghetti code that they are given. Uh, so before we even get into any of this, uh, let me just quickly show you a small nifty tool that comes along with uh, Ember. Uh, you can install this from the Chrome store and uh, if you don't know anything about Ember and you are just starting off, uh, this tool saves you a lot of times. There were times where I didn't know how to name something and I'll just come over here and I'll refer to it. I'll just show you what I mean by that. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, oh my, we added a lot of code. Uh, so this particular piece which says window.app which is like a normal JavaScript global variable is an Ember application and create a new one for me. And uh, this, uh, these two things that you see here, these are like some logging mechanisms that they have inside the framework so that uh, you can see what's actually happening behind the scenes when you're developing stuff. Because uh, with all these uh, magical frameworks, they don't tell you what they do behind the scenes. So half of the time, uh, when you're stuck with something and if you go through their docs, it takes you a lot of time to understand this. But uh, just by enabling these two, you can see in the console what's actually happening here. So uh, in Ember, uh, whatever URL you have, that's like a core thing for us. So earlier, if you uh, used to use Orkut or anything, you could have remembered that there was a slash community, slash something will be there, and slash profile, someone's profile would be there. So whenever you take someone's URL and hit it on the browser, it will just work. But uh, when people went on the jQuery uh, wave, they started putting in a lot of iframes inside the pages, and they started manipulating it in weird ways that no matter what uh, part of the site you are in, the URL will still keep saying the same thing, that facebook.com, nothing else. No slash, no nothing. If you hit refresh, you're gone. It's like, maybe like IRCTC, where you would have been in that book dot JSP or ASPX, whatever, I don't use it. And you would have been like in the third step. By mistake, you would have pressed the back button and you're doomed. You're not going home this time. So uh, we wanted to fix that. And that's why URLs are everything in Ember. Uh, so the way you define URLs is by uh, extending something called a router. A router is nothing but it, it's similar to your server-side routers. It just takes a URL, whatever URL you hit in the browser, and it will call some piece of functionality based on that. And uh, in any other framework, you would have to define, OK, where does this router call go to? Maybe if you are from Python, Java, whatever you are from, in all your routers, you usually map to which one does this request go to. But in Ember, you don't have to do that because some of that are uh, automatically done for you. So I have just defined two uh, routes. One is called about uh, something pretty basic. Another one is movies. Uh, so this is a very small movie app. Don't expect like IMDB level. Uh, it, it's an, that's an ambitious web app. This is like a stripped down version of it or the low budget version of it. Uh, so movies is at. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I'm not supposed to use that because of copyright reasons. Uh, so movies is a top level route that I want to use. And inside movies, uh, by clicking on each movie, I wanted to go to a movie slash a particular URL to see that movie's info. So I just gave it the movie name. And I can access this movie name uh, in my uh, whatever other parts of uh, piece of code that Ember offers. Uh, so by default, I don't want to go to, okay, let me just quickly show you that part. Uh, so in this page, we have, this is some, this is the, like the holy mother grail of 
uh, all uh, view when it comes to your screen. This is called the application block. Uh, if it doesn't have an ID uh, like this particular block, it means that this is for the application view. And here I just said Ember Movie App and Outlet is something where inside which it loads. So you can think of it like one, probably if you're from a Java company, you do this. You have one big page inside which you have an iframe and you load everything else inside that iframe. Uh, this is not an iframe, but it's essentially the same concept. That the page happens, uh, Tom is appended to us. Uh, yes, kind of. It's rendered inside this outlet. Yes, exactly. So uh, you can have outlets at multiple levels, but at the application level, this is the place where you want to keep your outlet. But uh, they know that everybody does that. So they created a default route for you called loading. So what actually, let me just open this. Uh, OK. It, my machine doesn't listen to me anymore. OK, uh, so uh, to just show you what I was talking about, if you see here, it just shows what versions of the libraries that you are using right now. And apart from that, it shows uh, that you just move through all these uh, magically created blocks, functional blocks. Each have their own inner meaning. But uh, if something is failing, and if you have this level of logging enabled, you will know that it's failing at exactly this particular point. And uh, with that, you can place whatever functionality you want in the appropriate blocks. So uh, don't try to uh, get all this into your mind. When you start using it, you'll understand. It's just to show you how friendly it is. And uh, to show you something else, uh, OK. So this is our index. So there you see Ember Movie App, which is like this particular block. And this is Outlet. Uh, now I, I did add one more block over there for uh, loading. So if I wanted to understand uh, what all this uh, magical stuff are, or I don't know how to name something, I can just come to this ember one. And it shows you that this, it actually highlights and shows you. This is your application block, and this is where your outlet is. And uh, if you go to routes, it actually shows you all the automatically created stuff over here. So even if you don't create your own route or your controller or whatever XYZ Ember uh, asks you to create, it's perfectly fine. It automatically creates one and keeps it just in case you want to use it or override it. But if you don't want to, it's perfectly OK. But you can just come in here and figure that out. And uh, it you can debug and see whatever you want uh, just by, OK, uh, that seems to be, yeah, if you select it, it shows you all that state just like your JavaScript debugger. So this one is pretty helpful. Uh, so going back, uh, if I just do a uh, slash hash bang of index, I am not sure. Uh, it's just a. It's just a file that I'm opening. Oh, you don't have templates. You I didn't want to show them through Grunt or anything because that will make it look as though Grunt is doing everything. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, I could have just done Grunt, but it's all the same, right? People shouldn't think it's all the same. So. Uh, what actually happens is, if you see here, there is a loading uh, route here. And what happens is, uh, for this loading route, the template's name is loading. So since I did define something called loading here, uh, when I transition between one page to another, meaning one route to another, it will actually show this content. So if you want to show whatever animations you want to show, this is the place you put it in. And let's say, uh, so we do have all these other controllers which are given to you. Like, if you want to have a standard error page, there is an error template. And uh, about we created. And since under movies, we have multiple ones, it actually shows you uh, what is the URL for each. Uh, for a movie, it's movies, colon, movie name. And there is also a loading in, inside that as well. So if you want to differentiate loading at different levels based on what page you're transitioning from or transitioning to, you can do all that. 
So it's like all the problems that you solve on a day to day basis are thought of and they're implemented here. And if there is something that uh, they haven't thought of already, if you just post it on GitHub, there is a big possibility that it will come up in the next two months because G uh, they follow a Chrome like release cycle where every month uh, you keep getting a new release and every uh, week you get like a beta release and every day there is a canary build which keeps going on. So it's same as Chrome. So you'll keep getting uh, new features pretty quick and uh, you don't have to wait and keep looking at that GitHub repo to figure out when is the next big update coming to fix all that 563 issues from GitHub. And uh, the worst thing about those kind of repositories is people would have actually given a lot of pull requests to fix most of these, uh, but they won't take those in either. Uh, but at Ember, uh, it usually happens pretty quick. But you can always take master, right, if you want to get this fixed. Yeah. Yeah, so the point is every month you will have new things coming in and uh, things getting much better than before. And they don't break stuff. So if you're like, uh, did something in January and you come back in like June, July, uh, your stuff shouldn't break. It should actually work a bit faster when you just upgrade. Uh, Does the routing support uh, resolve? Yes, there are, there are promises, yes. So when you give promises, what happens is, so what uh, he's asking about us, uh, there is something called resolve in context to the promises that I was talking about. Uh, meaning, what do you do till the server responds back? What Ember does is it will keep you in that loading state. Once that uh, server has responded back, it will immediately load that view for you. Uh, it's called, uh, uh, I forgot the name, but uh, those are promise-based uh, callbacks that we use in Ember. Everything is supposed to be used with promises. If you're trying to go synchronous, it won't work there. Uh, okay, uh, I think I'll have to just rush out a little. Uh, so, what happened? Okay, I think I messed up something. I'm not getting what I want to show you. Uh, but I can probably just show you one app which just recently got famous uh, this week, which was built on Ember to just show you how quick it is. And uh, this is over my uh, mobile's tethered network. So with that, you could figure out how fast this is. So uh, this guy just built a Ember app. Uh, over the iTunes Store API. So whatever you want to search through iTunes, it's not so easy there today. So he just built something over on top of it. So uh, let me search for something. And uh, this is how quick it moves through. So this loading apps that you see here, this is probably a loading route for this page. And the best part is, just like how you'd have learned JavaScript uh, when you started off by looking at all these sites that looked really fancy, you could do the same thing over here as well. All that uh, automatically generated stuff that people would have designed will still come up here. So you could just look at this and figure it out. So if you look at it, what's actually happening now is I could just click through and the URL alone changes, but the page in itself will, is not making, uh, is not getting reloaded uh, to, so to say. Uh, you don't reload the whole page every time. You just keep moving between all those views. And uh, from this, you could actually figure out how uh, quick this thing is. It's actually making a request to iTunes API, getting all those results back and showing it to you. And it's pretty quick. Uh, so you could try that out. Yeah, I'm done. Uh, sure. Uh, so uh, Ember is bit big. So. I do run this meetup called uh, Ember.js Bangalore. We just started off last week. And uh, within a week, I think we have like about 65 people now. Uh, it's, we are going to have our first meetup somewhere uh, over the next three weeks. Uh, so if you are interested to know about Ember, you don't need to know uh, much about any front-end uh, framework. Uh, this is more of a group where everybody from a newbie to like a full-blown expert could come in and get something out of it every time. So if you are interested, please do join in. Uh, we try to keep it lively. 
uh, and uh, the code for this talk, uh, which I couldn't show you, is available in this URL, uh, bit.ly and BCB Ember. And uh, if you can't get that, uh, it's just on my GitHub handle. Uh, if you just search for my name, uh, it's a public repo under it. And uh, if you go to this tags, uh, you can just check it out one by one and look at what we've done there. Uh, I know it must have sounded really vague, but there is a lot of time constraints here, and it's too much to talk about. Uh, but if you are interested, please do join our meetup group. And uh, any doubts you have, I am around all day. Uh, I'd love to talk about it. Thanks.